Hi everybody, um, my name is Rob, welcome to my channel, Escape to uh, France Charente. Um, this <laughs> video is a lot different to the videos that I've been posting previously. Uh, it's dark, um, it's, it may uh, contain some uh, upsetting stories. If the reason why you follow this channel is because you're interested in DIY projects and um, general living in France, uh, yeah, then maybe this video is not for you. Um, this video is really targeted at people who are searching through YouTube looking for um, information on post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. Um, uh, I have PTSD. Um, I was diagnosed with complex PTSD in October 2019. So this video is about me and how I live with PTSD and why we actually moved to France. So what is PTSD? Uh, PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. It's a mental and behavioural disorder that develops from experiencing a traumatic event such as sexual assault, warfare, traffic collisions, child abuse, domestic violence and other threats on a person's life or well-being. Um, symptoms uh, can include disturbing thoughts, uh, feelings, um, dreams related to the events, mental or physical distress to trauma related cues uh, and attempts to avoid trauma related cues, alterations in the way a person thinks and feels and an increase increase in the flight or fight response. Um, yeah, I did have to read that from the NHS uh, website. Um, so yeah, um, it was formally recognised in uh, 1980. It, it was originally thought that uh, it was bespoke really to, to yeah, the military veterans back in the First and Second World War. It was called shell shock. Uh, so it's now been formally named as of the 80s as a post-traumatic stress disorder. A bit about me. Um, I'm 51. I'm very close to being uh, 52 in a few weeks time. Um, I joined uh, the 1st Battalion, the 22nd Cheshire Regiment, uh, enlisting on the, in December 1989, and then uh, I left uh, late on in 1993. Whilst serving in um, the Cheshire Regiment, I uh, completed two tours of Northern Ireland and uh, finished off uh, with a tour uh, called Operation Grapple. Uh, which was the uh, United Nations response to the uh, war in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina. Uh, so in 1992, um, we set sail uh, to Bosnia, where we completed the, the first tour um, there. Um, that was, uh, as you can imagine, um, quite horrific at times. And um, from me having my formal diagnosis, uh, formed the foundations of um, the PTSD that I live with today um, which gradually got worse and worse and worse over the years um, through the uh, police career that I had uh, but that's where the, the the foundations of the PTSD uh, started I was completely unaware like many veterans in 1996 um, I joined Cheshire Police um, and as every uh, recruit um, starts off back then anyway it's, it's a little bit different now uh, started off as a police constable and then late uh, 1997 1998 um, I then started my career within the CID becoming a trainee detective constable and then later a qualified detective constable in 2001 um, I transferred to Sussex Police um, where I did a stint on uniform before getting back into being a detective again and then 2005 I became a, an, an acting detective sergeant, uh, 2006 promoted to uniform sergeant and then 2008 to uh, detective inspector. So from 2008 until I retired in February last year um, I was a, a detective inspector leading a, a team um, of detectives and police investigators. Um, it, it was a job that I thoroughly enjoyed it was really really fulfilling um, and I wouldn't go back and change anything um, but yeah it 
it was a career that I completely enjoyed. Being a man um, brought up in the, in the 70s and 80s uh, with the culture as it was then, um, I found it really difficult to talk about my feelings. I, I, I found it really difficult to accept the feelings and um, did quite a lot of masking behaviour. Um, I used to put on this suit of armour before uh, I would go into work each day and would portray this character um, at work where um, I pretended that nothing um, actually affected me to the point that I, I even fooled myself thinking that nothing affected me. But you can imagine that, um, you know, we as a police service and we as a society, we as a community ask a lot of our, our emergency services uh, we ask a lot of the ambulance service, we ask a lot of the fire brigade and we, like, and we ask a lot of the police um, to go and deal with the, you know, the types of stuff that, that people sh shouldn't just deal with. Um, we are asking people to you know, deliver death messages, we're asking people to deal with uh, dead babies, dead children, we're asking uh, our officers to pick up body parts f from the railway lines, to cut down bodies from trees. Um, to deal with body decomposition, to attend post-mortem examinations, to attend post-mortem examinations of children um, and to um, view child abuse images um, that are um, seized as evidence in, in investigations. That is just to name a few. That will have a knock-on effect on your mental health unless it's checked and recognised and it certainly had an effect on mine. But I ignored it. Um, every day I'd put my big boy pants on um, and I'll just crack on and go to work. Wouldn't talk to anybody about it. Wouldn't talk to my wife Lisa about it um, because I didn't think it affected me. And then um, the two jobs that in, in, in essence broke me um, was a 10 month old who had choked on a grape and then died. I had to uh, attend uh, that scene. And, uh, and the young boy as well. I had uh, a young boy who ran about a similar age. Yeah. Um, and um, that night I um, went home and cried for the first time. I was bathing my son, uh, he had his eyes closed and to me he just looked dead. And um, I just broke down, nobody saw it. <laughs> I kept it very well hidden. And then not so long afterwards um, I had to deal with um, a case of a missing person, it, it, it was a missing five-year-old um, and what transpired was um, his mother had taken him up to Beachy Head and had thrown him off, obviously killing him before, before doing the same to herself and I was the on-call senior investigating officer and uh, I attended that scene um, where I had to um, deal with the young boy who had died. Um, again I went home and cried um, and then just com completely buried it, didn't deal with it. <clears throat> and then it wasn't until about a year or so later um, that I had a catastrophic response to an email and it was an email that was giving me extra on calls and uh, my response to that was quite nuclear and quite unlike me. And um, what it did do was force me to uh, sit down and have a conversation with Lisa, where for the first time I started talking about the experiences in Bosnia, which is something that I never used to speak about. Um, and so I reported sick for work. Uh, yeah, my sickness record within the police was exemplary. Um, and I got signed off by the doctor. But from there, I was left in complete limbo. Uh, I knew that something was wrong, I just didn't know what, and, uh, and I didn't know how to fix it, uh, because I'd started to experience the flashbacks, the night terrors, being violent in my sleep, avoiding places, avoiding people, um, and my anxiety levels went through the roof, and I started to suffer. A serious amount of a serious amount of depression, something which I I never experienced before. Um, it wasn't until a friend who was also a military veteran from Afghanistan uh, came and told me that he actually had 
PTSD um, and had he then signposted me to a part of the NHS called uh, TILS which is a transition intervention liaison services and now goes under the banner of Operation Courage and um, I referred myself to them um, and had a um, psychiatric assessment where I was diagnosed with, uh, with PTSD, depression and anxiety. Unfortunately, you know, the team at that, at that time was quite small and so, and so they couldn't take me on as a service user. Um, but they had, uh, had identified that I needed uh, some um, specialised therapy. Now the, the therapy is uh, called EMDR, Eye Movement Desensitisation and Reprocessing, which I, I will talk to you about, it, about to you in a second, because uh, it's really cold in this, um, in this workshop and I'm starting to shake. So EMDR um, was actually discovered as a method of treating trauma-related uh, psychological problems uh, in the 90s, I believe. Now, I'm probably going to get most of this wrong, but, but this is how I understand it. Now, when you sleep, when you dream, uh, you dream in a, um, in a state of consciousness called uh, REM, uh, rap, the, the rapid eye movement. And uh, what your brain is doing during the REM stage is it's trying to process um, the events that have gone on. Now, if you have uh, experienced a lot of unchecked trauma within your life, then your, your, your brain is not going to be able to uh, process that effectively during sleep. But what it will do is it will try and process, you know, the arguments that, that you've had during the day, the bad meeting at work, um, you know, the, the disagreements that you've had at the, at the cashiers and the, and the post office, you know, it will, it will try and do that. Now, EMDR is a, a really effective way of trying to emulate the REM. Now, yeah, I don't know whether people have seen the, um, the Prince Harry interviews where he, he does the tapping. Um, but what, what the therapy is, is trying to do is to try and stimulate both hemispheres of the brain through the tapping, both the left and right side of your brain. Um, whilst uh, you are actually thinking about that particular trauma and you do it through a series of um, fast taps um, and you will continue do you continue to do that over a number of sessions at least 12 which is what the the National Institute for Clinical Excellent Excellence um, uh, advises um, obviously if you've uh, been faced with more trauma then you're probably going to need more sessions um, but that was a long way coming for me because um, I was in the NHS system and um, it was from the October time that I actually got diagnosed I believe um, and I wasn't set to start any sort of therapy until the January. And that's when the depression really kicked in because uh, I knew what I needed. Um, I couldn't stop the, the internal thoughts, I couldn't stop the flashbacks, um, I couldn't stop the remuneration thing I think is the word um, and, if, and if you can just liken the flashbacks to if you've got a box of kernels um, popcorn kernels in a bag um, and you put them into the microwave and it's pop 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 and I just couldn't control how often I would get the flashbacks in um, how many times in a minute I would get it I was off work at the time you know so I had a lot of time to myself yeah, Lisa was at work, um, my wife, and uh, it was just torture in my head. And that put me into a really bad state of depression. And as, as I said before, yeah, I'd never yeah, suffered from, from depression before. And so uh, I had some really, really dark thoughts during that, yeah, yeah, during that time. Um, and... I was fortunate enough to um, be put in contact with a charity called Police K UK, uh, which is a, a huge charity that yeah, that deal with uh, your serving police officers and retired police officers. And I managed to get some emergency funding from them, um, and they paid for the twelve sessions of um, of EMDR um, that I needed. Um, however, it became apparent. Um, after a number of sessions that I needed more. 
However, after the first session of EMDR, um, I felt I felt pretty good. I felt really, really positive. It, it had taken the edge off the two incidents that I spoke about before, you know, the young 10 month old and the five year old. Uh, it taken the edge off, off the trauma to a point that um, after a little while, I could actually yeah, return to work. Now work, you know, the police Sussex police were um, in the main, extremely supportive um, because um, I'd had a formal diagnosis, which meant that I was, um, I was covered by the Equality Act of 2010, formerly the Disability Discrimination Act. And so um, I was offered your reasonable adjustments. I didn't need to do it on call anymore. Um, I wasn't particularly frontline from then on. Um, I was still getting the, the EMDR whilst that was happening, um, but it, it had hit a point that um, after the initial bout of EMDR stopped, the symptoms started to come back again and they were coming back even worse. So I referred myself back to Operation Courage Tills, um, who then took me on as a service user and, uh, and assigned me a, um, a psychologist, Dr. Catherine Campbell, um, absolutely amazing. And at the same time, um, Lisa and I received some um, work, well, the, the workplace coaching was in relation to me, um, but it was offered to Lisa, Lisa, who wasn't working in the police then. Um, and yeah, that was given to us by a lovely lady called Kaj. Um, yeah, she follows and uh, yes, yeah, she knows how I feel about her. And that was absolutely amazing. Yeah, learning useful strategies like the, um, you, you, you like the drama triangle and the empowerment triangle. And learning things, you, you, the most important things that I learned around dealing with my own mental health uh, you were two th are two things that, that, you know, that jump out straight away is that you can only control the controllables and once you realise that and you've, uh, you've done everything you can to control the controllables then you just need to put that issue to one side or at least try your best and the other one is that there are three parts to your brain you've got your reptilian brain um, you've, got your, you've got your emotional brain and you've got your logical brain uh, and without going into too much detail um, your emotional brain um, more likely than not will be the one to first to respond to anything because that's where your, your threat system is uh, and it normally responds 10 times faster than your logical brain and so you know the old adage counts 10 um, which is probably not based on, on anything yeah, scientific back then actually does work because um, if you feel as though you're going to give a, an emotional response to something uh, and once you once you recognise that your response will be emotional, just walk away. Just walk away for the ten seconds and allow the logical brain just to kick in before you give your measured response. And so um, I then received another thirty-two sessions over a year. Um, that also included a, another bout of. Um, um, sickness unfortunately from work and then I returned after six months um, but my uh, mental health had got to such a state that um, I was having trouble just being in the same room as, as other police officers um, even though this, the, yeah, the stuff that I was doing wasn't um, frontline I was still reading reports on trauma um, and dealing with a lot of secondary trauma and so um, I had my final bout of sickness in work. Every year uh, within the place uh, certain roles um, are deemed higher risk than other roles. Um, Major crime teams, uh, yeah, scenes of crime, um, coroner's officers, firearms, um, and now detectives, uh, they receive an annual psychological assessment. And um, I did mine. It took about two hours to complete. It was online and um, submitted it in, in the usual way. And then within a few weeks, I had a phone call from the uh, from the occupational health lead who said, um, D.I. Morland, you can't be in the police anymore. 
you need to seriously consider ill health retirement. Um, which I'd already done 27 years and uh, with the four years in the military it meant that I was never going to be able to, I would never have to complete the full 30 years to get the full pension. Um, I was only going to be about six months off the normal retirement age. Um, but um, the risk of my mental health going into such a state where it would never ever recover uh, yet to any degree of your functionality was really really high um, and so that was the route that I took I applied for ill health retirement uh, it took about nine months and um, I did I got ill health retirement from the police service in um, February or February the 15th um, 2023 and um, it was around about that time that Lisa was talking to me about moving to France and the main and the main and the main driver for moving to France was all my triggers most of my triggers are UK based whether it be a police car siren from the UK an ambulance siren a fire engine siren seeing police officers seeing police cars drive down the same roads where I could pick out I've been to that incident there into that incident there I took a dead body down from there I dealt with a, I dealt with a dead child over there it was just it was just too much so I, I needed to come to an environment where those triggers weren't available um, so um, as a complete side we'd also applied to go on a place in the sun <laughs> um, and we were successful and in uh, July of um, last year 2023 um, we did the filming on the show and spoiler alert um, we bought a house it's the house that that I am in now and uh, we moved over in September um, which is what my YouTube um, channel is about really it's because um, I'm, I'm not really in a position where I can um, have meaningful uh, employment anymore because of the um, because of the troubles that I have especially in terms of concentration um, and the anxiety and so um, I that is the reason why I do the YouTube channel because it's it's meant to be informative um, it's meant to give people advice on moving to France post Brexit because it's really really difficult um, and it, and it actually gives me a purpose, and especially the editing, because I, I enjoy the editing. Um, I won't enjoy the editing for this particular video, because it means that I've got to listen to myself again. Uh, and it's a hard subject to talk about anyway. Um, but, yeah, so if you're interested in um, how I, people with PTSD, carry on with life after diagnosis, uh, after diagnosis after treatment um, and in France then yeah please subscribe um, but yeah so life is pretty much completely different here uh, it's very relaxed which is what I need which is what Lisa needs as well um, yeah, the, yeah the kids are settling into school really really nicely uh, we've made some really really good friends out here um, and yeah, we are just learning how to uh, cope in a different country uh, with a language that we are learning, but we still don't speak yet fluently, nowhere near fluently. And so, yeah, um, yeah, so going forward um, with um, me um, and you know, the PTSD that I still uh, live with and uh, to a larger extent suffer with. You know there are still the flashbacks you know there are the night terrors my sleep is absolutely appalling my concentration is abysmal um yeah, this short video has taken me absolutely ages to um to record um but yeah um I, i'm equipped with the tools um in order to recognize when um, i'm having a particularly bad bad spell um i've got the relaxation um, methods that I do, um, you, know, you know, the mindfulness methods, um, yeah, the slow taps on the EMDR um, when I'm feeling particularly 
good about myself and uh, when I receive a compliment, which is not something that I've been particularly good at before, is actually receiving and holding on to a compliment. Um, so yeah, so life is uh, pretty good over in France and it was definitely the right move. Um, yeah, this will be the, yeah, the last time that I mention it on the channel yeah, about the PTSD. I just thought it would be important for any any current subscribers that are particularly interested. Um, you know, this is not a pity party by any stretch of the imagination. I knew what I was signing up for when I joined the military. I knew what I was signing up for when I joined the um, police. I just wish I had the emotional maturity and the emotional intelligence to have actually recognized um, and just recognized the um, yeah, the issues that I was having and not to have been drawn into uh, any sort of toxic masculinity, which is uh, definitely why I had for a, uh, yeah, for a long time in my life, if I'm honest. So yeah, um, I don't know. I will uh, watch um, yeah, the comments. If people have got questions, um, I'm quite happy to answer them. Um, if, if there are too many questions, I might do a follow-up video uh, at some point in the future. Um, this is not about getting subscribers, it's not about getting views. Um, in a way it is, because if it reaches out to people that are either interested in PTSD, have PTSD, um, think they're going to get PTSD, or supporting somebody with PTSD, don't even know that they've got PTSD but probably have got it. If it, if this just reaches out to one person and offers them any sort of uh, support um, then yeah today has been worthwhile and me putting um, myself on the line really because um, hopefully the YouTube algorithm doesn't punish me in the fact that it's not the normal content that I um, that I post so but hopefully it will get out. Um, if you're watching this video and you think it might help somebody, please share it on social media. Um, yeah, that leaves uh, one last thing left to say. Laters.